There are some mysteries in life we just can't explain. Are we alone in the universe? What happened to Amelia Earhart? Is the Earth flat? Why did the Guardians get shut out six times in a month, yet still took two or three from the best team in baseball and have the best record in the American League? You are Locked On Guardians, your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Today's episode is brought to you by Supply House. Supplyhouse.com is the reliable way to get parts fast. Shop for your next plumbing, HVAC, or electrical job and get fast shipping from coast to coast at supplyhouse.com. Hello, thanks for joining us. Uh, it's been an interesting weekend, let's just be honest, between the great feeling of uh, taking two out of three from Philadelphia and then just the anger about no trade being announced or having occurred and everyone just telling me, hey, I, it's always it's always fun because somehow Avery always provokes someone in my comments and then I have 140 replies that I am not part of. But, uh, you know, that's that's the way of it. For those who do not know me, I am not Avery. Uh, I am Jeff Ellis, former uh, tw- man. I really messed up my intro. Uh, one of the original hosts here of Locked On for baseball. I've been here since the beginning uh, of the Locked On Guardians podcast. Before that, I was a national draft and prospect analyst at Scouting 24-7. And before that, I was your 22nd favorite blogger at every Cleveland sports blog that has or will exist. All right. We'll have to find what 22 is. I'm Justin Ladder. For the record, I am not a flat earther. I just threw that in there at the beginning of the thing. I do not believe in flat earth. Uh, comment below. If you, no, no, don't comment that either. Uh, you might have seen me showcasing my work at places like Guardians ooh, Baseball ooh. Insider, the <laughs> News Herald, and the Morning Journal. I have been getting trolled on that so bad on Twitter every time. I make like the Joey Cancillo call up or any other, any other prospect news or well, they had to showcase him because they don't have a lot of everybody, advanced pitching prospects. Everybody loves it. Now they're all like, Ooh, showcase. And they're showcasing. Like, I think I'm so glad I've gotten to the point where nobody is seriously saying, Oh, what if they're showing? Like, no one's doing it seriously anymore. It's all just to troll me. And I, I love it. That's fine. I love that. We are on that side of this argument now that everyone is, everyone's aware Everyone's aware it drives me insane when it's real. So they love to do it to get my goat. And I am, I'm all about that. That is the best way to do it. So keep, uh, keep chiding me about it because I know you're all joking about it. What's not a joke is the guardians. I, uh, I don't know. Oh, real quick. I want to do a quick shout out at the beginning of the show too. We, uh, got some nice tweets from a gentleman, Kean in Detroit, um, who listens. He is a Tigers fan says we do great work. Appreciate that. Even though he's not a guardians fan, he still listens because he likes to keep an eye on the, the division rivals. I told him, I said, I wish uh, there was more fun podcasts after Tigers games because they have been giving the Guardians fits. But the real question, Jeff, is how do the Guardians keep doing this? They have been shut out six times, including Saturday night. I didn't see that game, thankfully. Um, but they have six. They've been shut out six times in this month alone. They've had 11 for the year. Yet somehow they took two or three from Philadelphia. And I know Friday, you know, the Phillies made some errors, but the Guardians were bunting, they were running. They were taking advantage of a poor Philadelphia defense, um, which seems to be one of the things Philadelphia doesn't do well. But that's a deep team. They hit homers. They draw walks. They've got a pretty good rotation. And I know Sunday they didn't face the best pitcher that Philadelphia has to offer because they didn't see Zach Wheeler. They didn't see Aaron Nola. And Ranger Suarez is hurt. But, you know, they can't control it. All they can do is show up and and play who's in front of them. The the Phillies have been the best team in baseball, you know, record-wise for quite a a few months now or quite some time. The Guardians took two or three, and I, I don't know how. I mean, this team, they didn't hit a home run Friday, but they found a way to win. At two today. They, with Ben Lyle. And then they hit, then they hit two. So they, didn't, they needed the home run ball, and it worked out on Sunday. And I, the only thing I can say is just this bullpen. That's the only thing I can say. Get the bullpen a lead, and they, and they can do anything. But it's just amazing how this team continues to find a way to be resilient and, and do things and, and win and, and still be exciting despite of, of what's been a tough month. Yeah. Uh, you know, Josh Naylor didn't play at all. Uh, apparently he's, yeah. he's a little beat up and that's, that's the official what Andre kind of said. He's, he's getting some time with some uh, nicks and bruises as it were. The, and that's the story of Josh. He is always hurt. And that would explain why over the last two months he has been kind of a shell of what we saw at the start of the year. His OPS is under 800 now. Like he has just not been the same guy. Speaking of that, John Genzi Noel is the only player with a OPS above 750 for the last 30 days. So yeah, it is to a degree smoke and mirrors 
Um, you know, uh, Quan and in, is is up there. You know, Ty Freeman has been pretty uh, solid. But after that, it's like Martinez, 702, 686 for Jose. And then if we go down, 589 for Schneeman, 537 for Fry, 486 for Rocchio. Oh, boy. Like, that shortstop position. And that's why it's, it's amazing they took two out of three. Now, I will say Jimenez uh, also has been struggling, but he had a great weekend. He really did. Mm -hmm. So it's about guys stepping up. Why, how does this happen? Quan has been scuffling a bit. I And then he hit the go-ahead home run. Uh, John Kenzie Noel, listen, he makes baseball go far. But I was listening to the Philly radio broadcast because I was doing yard work today all day. And they were like, why are they throwing him anything in the zone? Like they were just like the announcers were mesmerized by it. And at some point, pitchers, I, I mean, Kyle on that home run, both <laughs> Allard threw two pitches, both meatballs in the middle of the zone. He'll make you pay. Like that's what's going to be. And someone asked us about it. We mentioned it all the time last week. Like make let him make teams pay until teams figure him out. So he should be playing every single day from here on out. And, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, something I absolutely got wrong is his defense is better than I expected. Like he has made a few nice plays. That is something that I, you know, people are like, you know, uh, talk about that. Sometimes we give ourselves too many laurels. I got his defense wrong. So maybe I got more wrong there and I want to be wrong. Right. I, I would love if he could be a, with his natural power and every day, or we'll, we'll see, maybe he makes adjustments, but um, right now I've been wrong on Noel and I'm very happy to be wrong. Uh, I'm hoping the rest of this team will turn around. We got so excited about Bo Naylor turning around and now he's back in the toilet bowl again. So yeah, the, I think the bigger thing from all of this, um, you know, it's great. Can Tillo made his debut. I feel like you were the first one to really, before it was official, you pointed out that it was likely happening. So some credit to, to Justin there who had some initial tweets, maybe didn't get the credit he deserved for it. But, uh, I, I think a, the big takeaways from this weekend is again, the bullpen. Like the Phillies broadcasters were mesmerized by our bullpen and two, some trades need to get made. Like it, it can't be sitting on your hands or being afraid. Yeah, I'll, get to, I'll get to the trade stuff here in a second. I want to echo also what you say about Noel. Like he's been, I don't know if he's a serviceable right fielder long-term. He's definitely, definitely better at first base. I never doubted his defense at first base, but he has been better in right field than I would have assumed. Like he's not Oscar. He's not, uh, J-Rod or, or, or Jonathan Rodriguez. Those two guys were not are not good defenders out there. I don't know if you're ever going to call him plus. You definitely want to pull him um, when you have a lead late. But again, he makes teams pay when they make mistakes. And that's, that's the best thing they can do right now. I think I'm encouraged offensively by the fact that everyone isn't – this is going to sound weird. I'm, I'm sort of encouraged the fact that everyone seems to be slumping at the same time because it makes me think that a lot of guys are going to come back around at the same time. But at least we have like an explanation for like why Josh Naylor has been struggling because it's an injury. Uh, David Fry looked better this weekend, by the way, too, and and he's on the other side of his injury. I, I'm hopeful that the reason he tailed off for a little bit there was also due to injury. So like those things can make you feel a little better if you squint hard. I'm not saying this team doesn't need another hitter. And yeah, Noel should play every day because again, if a lot of a lot of good major leaguers are mistake hitters. A lot of very average major league hitters are, are are mistake hitters. A lot of guys have had long careers just being mistake hitters. And I think Noel is a good fit for that because sometimes that's going to happen. Now, it's going to happen less in the playoffs, but the one thing the Guardians have lacked is a guy who can make a mistake turn into a big one from other teams, um, which is what they didn't have in 2022. They've hit more home runs this year. You, you don't get many in the playoffs. But if someone in the playoffs makes a mistake – who on this team is going to make that make that pitcher pay? You know, Jose will probably a healthy Naylor can. Stephen Kwan certainly has shown he can. But John Kenzie Noel, if he gets a mistake pitch, it could turn the tide of a game like it did on Sunday. So that's reason enough to start him right now while this team still needs another bat in the trade market, which we'll get into. Um, it's but it's worthy enough for him for him to start right now. So I agree 100. percent The other thing I want to say too is I Kate Smith right now is the new Andrew Miller. How about Stephen Vogt? Do you think Stephen Vogt wanted to win this series, Jeff? Because the plan, the way it was described was there might be some combination of Joey Cantillo on Sunday with Xavier Curry to follow because Curry was the original listed starter. And then mm -hmm. Thursday it became apparent that it was going to be Cantillo, even though people doubted me because um, they needed time for his family to get from Hawaii yeah. um, to Philadelphia. Shout out to the eyebrow. Um, I they didn't go to Curry. Like they could have, they were down. They could have easily gone to Curry or there was tie. I'm sorry. It was tie at that point. Yeah. 
Stephen Vogt easily could have said, we're not going to burn our relievers in the, in the fourth inning. We're not going to burn Cade Smith this early. Um, he could have gone to Curry or Pedro Avila. I think Avila pitched on Saturday, so maybe not. But he could have gone to Curry to get them to the next couple of innings and see if that worked. Instead, he went to Cade Smith. Cade Smith was awesome. The whole bullpen was awesome on Sunday. I think Stephen Vogt wanted to win that game and yeah, win bring that Cade series. Smith into the – yeah. Bringing Cade Smith into the fourth inning, man, and what he did, again, three strikeouts, four batters he he got out, or I'm sorry, five batters he got out, um, 24 pitches. He is the Andrew Miller right now, man. He really is. Like, this bullpen is better. I can't believe I'm saying this. This bullpen is better than the Brian Shaw, Andrew Miller, Cody Allen bullpen. It just is from back to front. It is so deep. Emmanuel Classe only needed seven pitches. This is a Philadelphia team that takes a lot of pitches. They walk. They hit home runs. You know, class A needed seven pitches to dispose of them on Sunday. This this bullpen is incredible, and it's they need to make the appropriate moves to get this bullpen into October because if you can get this bullpen a lead after four or five innings, you're going to win some ball games in October. I'm not sure how far they can go, but if they can get this bullpen a lead in October, I'm convinced they can do some damage and make a really fun run, and they need to make the appropriate moves to allow that to happen because bullpens are volatile, Bullpens like this don't come around every that uh, that often. You don't know what 2025 holds. They have to do something to get this bullpen to be able to to leverage it in October. No, I don't disagree. We'll talk about some trades on the other side. We'll mention Cantillo's debut. We want to talk about it a little bit, um, but it's going to be a very trade heavy second half of the show. We'll talk about the trades that have been made. Jeff's got some really good targets he sold me on. If Jeff was going to sell me something, Jeff should be selling me a salesman. He should quit his job in teaching because he, I mean, if he just sold me on a bunch of different players to trade for. So we're going to talk about those guys. Keep saying we're going to talk about draft pick debuts. It's probably not going to be today. I'm sorry. I keep well, saying we, we got to mention the Basmanian devil a little bit. If nothing else, we'll end the we show. Will. We will. We'll talk about yeah. Travis Bazana on the other half. So stick around for all that stuff. This is a sponsor that is close uh, near and dear to my family's hearts. And the reason for that is simple. Uh, Stitch Fix boxes appear all the time. <laughs> my my wife loves and adores this company. They Stitch Fix re-upped with us and they gave us an even better deal. So if you've been tempted to try, you definitely want to try it now. Uh, you get, and I'll get to that deal in a second, but my wife loves this product so much, she wouldn't change. She wouldn't even when they upgraded our deal, she didn't want to give up her stylist. Her stylist, as she says, it is just, it's easy mode for finding a new wardrobe. If you are busy, if you're like me and you have kids and job and <laughs> you just don't have time, Stitch Fix is made for you. They're going to help you upgrade your wardrobe. And the nice thing is they'll send you something and you keep what works. You send back what doesn't. Style that makes you feel as good as you look. Get stitchfix.com. Get started at stitchfix.com slash MLB and get $20 off your first fix. That's stitchfix.com slash MLB for $20 off. Stitchfix.com slash MLB must redeem within seven days of sign up. Offer does not include kids fixes. Got the lockdown sports today feed over on YouTube and on everywhere you can get podcasts. Going to see a lot of local hosts this week when it comes to the trade deadline. So if you want to hear about trades around the MLB, if the Guardians make a deal, we'll be on there. Check out the Lockdown Sports Day podcast for local opinions from the hosts that know your team the most. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Real quickly, Joey Cantillo. I don't know if he's going to stay up. I guess I'm interested to see what happens after this. But um, I would say as expected. I was excited for Joey just because we've seen him in the minors. He's been here a while. He's a good kid. and has really good upside. I mean, the stuff is quality. He misses bats with the changeup. Mm -hmm. The fastball plays in the zone because of extension. I mentioned this on a, on a YouTube short. You can go back and watch. Um, the slider and the curveball have also become, you know, average offerings for him. It's just the control. He's got to throw strikes. That's the biggest thing for him. And it, it took him 75 pitches to get, you know, 13 outs. I'm not surprised. And because Philadelphia Rough team. This, Rough is a, team. this is a tough team, a tough ballpark to do that against. So, all things considered, Kyle Schwarber got him twice. He's lucky that the walks didn't burn him a little more, but still someone I'm excited about. I'm just curious to see what happens to him next time through. But um, I don't know. Good sign. I'm, I'm, I was glad to see him, and I hope uh, he got through that okay. Yeah, this was a rough debut. Like, 
I can't think of a maybe a worse team to debut against when you're uh have some no. problems with walks and home runs. And he he battled. Uh at the end of the day, I think that he he should be here to stay because if we're being honest, like I Alan appears to be working on stuff. He's just kind of being kind of mediocre, even in triple A. And Tristan McKenzie, I think you're right. I think he has the yips. I, I think he is. I mean, his, his, his two starts. The last two games. I mean, he looks broken right now. And I don't, it, it, and by all accounts, it's not surgery. And again, he wouldn't be gaining velocity if he needed the elbow surgery necessarily. So it's the mental game is just cracked open on him. I don't think for McKenzie, I don't want to spend a lot of time McKenzie, but I don't think Cleveland would let it get this far down the road with McKenzie if there was an injury to be concerned yeah. about. I don't, I think at this point they'd say, Look, man, it's not working. I think you need to get checked to make sure everything's okay with that elbow. They've gotten too far down the road at this point not to have done their due diligence medically to see if that is the issue. Um, but yeah, 12 walks in the last two games. It's just, it's not getting who's, any better. Uh, who was their second rounder who got the yip? So I am blanking on his name, who is a high school kid. I mean, Brady Aiken. Oh, no, I don't know. I can't remember now. If you remember, I can't remember either. It was, it was, wasn't he like Hart? Uh, Har- Harmon Killebrew's grandson too. I can't remember what his name. Oh, was. Carter, not Carter. Uh, no. Grant, Grant, Grant. Yeah, I think it was Grant something. Oh, I Grant Hawken. Grant Hawken. Yeah. You're right. You got it. Grant Hawken. Grant Hawken. I forgot about that. I was really high in Grant Hawken. High school pitchers, man. Uh, <laughs> not to not to deter people from what we thought the draft was, but yeah. high school pitchers. I want to say this real quick. People are are very. There's a lot of negative chatter about trade the trades for Cleveland. They haven't done anything yet. There's been no rumors. One thing, two things we know. Cleveland's never mentioned in rumors, almost never. And I want to get to one here in a second. Um, Cleveland's never mentioned in rumors. I mean, heck, nobody knew what they were doing in the draft until 15 minutes before when Jeff got the text. Nobody knew that. Um, nothing gets out about this team. So I, I wouldn't necessarily, again, I'm not, I would not read into that about there's been no rumors. There's been like tiny little bits we can share. Um, the other thing is people keep saying, well, they're just not going to do anything. And the only thing I could say about that is, Okay, one, the trade market this year is very – it's not fair to compare it to the 2016 to, to 2019, whatever, because the markets are different now because of the added wild cards. So that makes yeah. it harder. But people who are saying, well, they're not going to do anything because they don't do anything. Baldo Jimenez, 2011. Um, 2016. I'm going to say that's too long out. ago. I'm going to tell you that's too long ago. They're going to tell know. you all those are too long ago because everyone's like – the. Uh, the last two to three years. And, and I know everyone loves it when I interrupt you, but I, I want to put in one small caveat here. Last time they were good was 2022. Go look at that deadline. There was crud available and it was really overpriced. And also again, they did nothing. They did nothing, but they were all the way down the road, thought they had a Sean Murphy deal done and then Oakland imploded it. So there you, you go. Know, they, that's one thing. They, that's why that they spent all of their time focused on one deal. And then, Oakland decided to implode it because they didn't want to get good players. Like that deal might have included Tanner Bybee at that time. Let's be honest. Like the talk was there talking Ooh, pitchers. So that would have hurt. That, that would have hurt a lot. So, but hey, you know, Oakland has nothing to show for it. So good, good job, no, Oakland. Don't. Way yeah. to implode that deal. That probably hurt them more than anything else. But and yeah, the thing I'll point out that's different between 2022 and now is that team didn't get hot until September. They crushed it in September. And that none of Terry Francona's teams ever had a great first half. The Guardians have the best record in baseball before the trading deadline. That never happens. Um, but they, when they've had opportunities to improve this team, they've done it. They've never had a team this good before the trading deadline. They just haven't. So you're sitting there saying, well, they're never going to do anything because they never do anything. The times they've been in first place, they've made moves, except for 2022. But again, that team was filled with guys they were trying to get looks at. I understand they're trying to get looks at a lot of guys this year. But you've gotten a lot of look at Brian Roque. You've gotten a lot of look at Will Brennan. You've gotten a lot of look at some other guys. You can demote back to triple a if you absolutely have to right now um but 2016 2017 2018 they made moves 2019 they made moves um 2020 they they made moves i know it was kind of a buy sell situation too a lot of teams operate in the gray right now i i i would not i think people who say they don't they're not going to do anything because they haven't i think that's a wrong assessment i just think I think it's negativity overwhelming. Believe, like, stop. I just stop. don't think an Andrew Miller type trade exists. That's the problem. Yeah. But I, I think they're going to do something. I think that the idea that there's been no rumors and the idea that, well, they're not going to do anything because they never do. They've done, they've made moves almost every year they've been in contention. I know 2022 they didn't, but they've never also been in the situation they're in now where they have 
the game's best bullpen and they have the best record in the American League. They have a chance to go for it. And they didn't have crazy starting pitcher needs. They didn't have crazy needs for hitters um, like they do right now. We're going to talk about some of those guys on the other side. So uh, stay tuned for that. Get supplies from the site that is made for skilled trades, like the Guardian, skilled traders, hopefully. Supplyhouse.com. Supplyhouse.com is the reliable way to order plumbing, HVAC, electrical, and products online. Their easy-to-use website is packed with helpful resources and the latest product info to help you get the job done right. You can get an inventory of over 200,000 parts. That's bigger than this year's trade market. Over 400 top brands to get you to get an order delivered right to your door. Fast shipping coast-to-coast. If you need help with an order, get expert support from industry-leading service from the friendliest folks in the business talk to a real person every time pros and skill trades can get a competitive edge by joining supplyhouse.com's free trade master program like the rays they're trade masters every trade master gets access to a dedicated phone line free shipping discounts on every order join the thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at supplyhouse.com slash tm and order plumbing hvac electrical supplies from anywhere with just a few clicks at supplyhouse.com Guardians and Detroit, they're back at it on Monday. You can check that out in your Sirius XM app when it's 24 hours from the trading deadline when that thing will kick off. Um, Jeff, what do you want to do real quick? Do you want to talk about the reactions? Do you want to throw out the guys you have been thinking about? What do you want to do first? Um, Let's do reactions. People like reactions. Reactions. Okay. My first reaction... I. We saw from, I think, uh, I think Zach Meisel said it, and I think uh, Cleveland.com said it, the Guardians made an offer for Randy Rosarina, and I am not shocked. It is not better than the Seattle yeah. deal. I think the Rays did great in that deal. I don't think Cleveland had the players that's, that the Rays wanted because I don't, you're, not, you're not targeting positions. You're not targeting um, rankings. Nobody goes by rankings, and, and like the rankings are fun for people like us. And, and the MLB. Do, I got to interrupt you. MLB.com yeah, rankings right now are crap i love mayo i love callus they are the goats they are around rushmore for me but they understandably it's a two two to five man operation they are focused on the draft they broke all the signing uh draft stuff so they haven't updated their ranks the reason these guys are low on ranks you know at the start of the year and are now being traded is because they're not low on ranks they used this year and really showed off that's why a bunch of guys who are in the 20s got traded because they didn't have the reps, the experience to see them. You know, both of these prospects that Seattle got are guys who would have been top 10 prospects in Seattle system if you did a re-rank, in my opinion. Uh, just great. And here's the thing. Same thing we talked about in the draft. Uh, it's traits. It's not performance. It's it's very, like, this whole weekend, Tampa Bay has been hunting down guys with vertical break, extension, and I'm blanking on the other term, so I'll be quiet and let it go to Justin. <laughs> vertical approach angle. Yeah, Sorry. that's the other thing. And the other thing, too, is you can't just say, well, the Rays got the 10th best prospect for the Mariners system, so the Guardians should just give up their ninth. It doesn't work like that. The Mariners got a deeper system, and um, internal evaluations are very different. And, all, again, all these other things, just you can't just – they're not one-to-one. -one. Like, there's no way of saying, like, oh, well, they should just give the ninth guy. They should have gave up, you know, this outfielder if that's what they wanted because they want traits. They can't necessarily – the ass might be totally different. What what the the what Oakland got for Sean Murphy was a t probably a totally different ask from what they were asking for Cleveland because systems are different. They're going to want different players, so you can't just sit there and well, how does this trade compare to this trade or this player? Or why didn't they just give up the ninth ranked player to beat this offer? Doesn't doesn't add up like that because internal rankings are way different, and and those teams don't care what they're ranked publicly. It's just fun for us. Um, that being said, the Rays knocked out of the park. I think on that trade, I don't think Cleveland had the traits. Or players in their system to match that. I would have liked a Rosarena, honestly. I know, I know you're not the biggest fan of him. He's I a poor he's defender. An fit. He is. So you would have probably likely had to move Quan to center, where he takes a step down defensively. He's not going to carry the same defense that he is in left to center. And then a Rosarena is a poor defender in left. So you're denigrating two positions by doing that. P I think poor, a Rosarena offensively poor. is maybe the worst defensive left fielder in baseball. <laughs> yeah. I think def I think offensively he would have been a fit. He has yes. control. He's gotten better. Um, so that's why they made the offer, I think. But at the end of the day, I think what Seattle gave up, I mean, I'm not saying they overpaid and for him. I think I think they paid the right price for him, but I think I think the Rays just got a really great return. And I don't and think Cleveland had the right pieces to fit that. It would not shock me 
if the player to be named layer is a player who went in this year's draft relative draft. I think that's, that's true. I think that is what this is. And it wouldn't shock me if, if these two teams had some conversations beforehand and Tampa, you know, decided to do a deal specifically to maybe get another player from the draft. The Jazz Chisholm one, I I don't think Cleveland had any interest in Jazz Chisholm. I didn't have any interest in Jazz Chisholm. I think I think Jazz Chisholm has star quality traits, not traits, but yes, traits, physical tools. Um, he's a fun player. I think he has more. Now you're, I know you said this about a prospect that won a deal, but I think Jazz Chisholm is more name value than than yes. actual talent level right now. I think the Yankees paid exactly what his worth is right now. My my only surprise for the Jazz Chisholm thing was how little it took to get him. I think the Yankees gave up a fair amount for him. I think Ramirez is the best player in that deal. Not a big Far fan of Cerna. I don't know. I don't know who the third guy is truthfully. Uh, um, another infielder. Similar. I think the return, I think the return was fair. I'm just surprised that they didn't get more for him. So that must've said that nobody was paying the price for the name value is my only guess. But I, I don't think he was a fit for Cleveland. I really don't. Well, first off, he's had a lot of health issues. He's only played in, uh, this is twice now, yeah. twice over a hundred games. He's been a league average bat at most of his career. He is annoyed and ticked off teammates and he was voted like most overhyped and most like two very the negative players. awards by the players. So yeah. this is not a guy who is winning. He, yeah, the, not a guy we talked about. You know, I talked about some more knuckleheads off the air today and this team is going away from the knuckleheads. So they are, there was, they are. There was no chance. Carlos Estevez goes to the Philadelphia Phillies. Thank goodness they didn't have to face him this weekend in time. But uh, the Phillies gave two really good pitches for him. I'm, I'm impressed with the Angels return there. Rental. That is a lot for a rental closer. A Man, that was a it, good one. That have been a lot. Reset the market. Like that. The, yeah, and we're not talking about the J- Jason Adams deal. I, I mean, I almost feel like they got more for Jason Adams than Isaac Paredes, weirdly. But uh, yeah, I mean, the reliever market so. got got reset. And it's, it's it pricey. Did. Yeah, the Jesse Winker deal hurt because I think the Mets gave up a reliever for him, and that stinks. I think Cleveland could have easily gotten that, um, but they they jumped the market on that a little bit. Um, no, I it agree. Is what it I, is. That is the one where I'm like, yeah, I think they could have gone a little bit more on that. Um, yeah, I, I'm i surprised they didn't go for him because they've tried to acquire him in the past, and I think he would have mm-hmm. been a good fit for them. So we'll see what they do okay. on the offensive side of things. You do have some offensive names to talk about. Before we get there, I'm just going to say one thing. I'll shut up. So last month we heard that a White Sox scout was in town in Lake County. Um, area scouts sometimes they know stuff, sometimes they don't. So it's always a grain of salt. But um, there was some shatter that you know Cleveland could have been a contender for Garrett Crochet. Um, I think Eric Fetty makes the most sense for Cleveland to me pitching wise. I think Eric Fetty is the guy. He doesn't add a lot of salary next year. He is a, a just a solid guy. And you might read the White Sox saying um, that the Guardians and the Twins are interested in him. There are other teams interested in him. And the Cardinals, supposedly, they asked for Jordan Walker, and they said no. So the Cardinals are interested. That tells you where the market is. But when the when the White Sox say, we don't want to trade him in the division, is just pay more. Pay more. That's what they're going to say. And you might, have to over, you might have to pay more for him. I would pay quite a bit for Eric Fetty. I think he just makes so much sense for this market for them, but it's going to be expensive and I'll shut yeah. up now because you have really oh. good hitter targets for the Cleveland. Well, I got to throw, I got to throw one thing out there about crochet, which is, I know people will, will talk about him in our comments, but he has hit his like highest innings threshold ever. He is actually setting up where he may not be able to pitch in the postseason. So that is one of the reasons I don't think Gary crochet gets traded right now. Cause there's a good chance he's already stated he's not going to change how he pitches. He's not willing to come work out of the pen. So he's like setting up a situation where if you trade for him, that's great, but he's not going to be able to, available for the postseason. Uh, two targets. Let's talk about the least likely one. Uh, everyone's focused on Brent Rooker in Oakland, but you're missing the boat. The real star there, the guy to look at, the player you want to get is Lawrence Butler. Why? He plays a really good right field. He has played some center field. He's been one of the hottest players in baseball. He runs well. He's 24 years of age. I don't know if they would shop him or not. Uh, Westlake High School in California. We know that's a, a high school that Cleveland heavily scouted. I mean, he's doing it all right now. If, if you're missing on, if you're, everyone asks me about Brent Rooker, I'm sorry, you're doing it wrong. You should be asking about uh, Lawrence, Lawrence Butler, Butler, who has I'm lower bat pip as me. well. Yeah, he's he looks like borderline star in the making. Again, he's 24. He's got a ton of control. You know, I'm willing to, to sit there and, and make, you know, it's like, okay, you guys want, the lotter and Ralphie. Yeah. I'm, I'm willing to do both. I'm willing to, and Ralphie is Ooh. hard. I know, but it's going to be expensive for a guy like this. 
man, the first name didn't hurt me, but the second no. name, but and, and, again, this is what people should be taught. This is, I, I'm interrupting yeah. you now, but this no. is what you got to remember with trades is anytime you say, well, give up Sandlin, give up Morgan, who cares? If the trade doesn't make you flinch like it just did to me, where when he said Ralphie and a lotter, then it's not a good enough return because the return has to hurt a little bit. Yeah. So that's that that tells you right there that that trade should get get things going if they really were interested in Butler. So anytime you say, well, just trade Sandlin and Morgan and Tana, it's like if we're going to talk about trading Sandlin in a bit. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't, yeah. If it doesn't make you flinch and say, wow, that might hurt to trade him. It's not probably not going to work. Just remember that. Yeah. And then I think the other guy that's really, really interesting right now is Josh Smith in Texas because he's not going to have a job soon. He is uh Josh young is coming back. He has been their third baseman, but he's a guy who's actually been an above average defensive shortstop. He's played left field, third base, second base, Left-hand hitter has had, you know, walk rates in the minors. He's got a kind of a high bat pip. There's probably some regression, but he's also had high bat pips in the minors. He's got good speed. So he might be a guy who can rock a 315 to 320. Um, you know, he, he's at a 340 now. But what he does, there's not a ton of power in the game, though he has 10 home runs, is he gets on base. He walks at a decent chunk. He, you know, he's he had good hit. contact data. He's got a 135 weighted runs created plus right now. So maybe that's a little bit inflated. But you know, three years of control, but here's Texas's problem. Texas are buyers. Texas has maybe the worst miners in baseball. I'm just going to put that out there. So if they want to upgrade their pen, is there a world where you, you bring up Andrew Walters, where Walters, you can't wait for him to develop here. I mean, Walters could end up being the second best reliever Cleveland has right now. Like that's how high that dude's ceiling is. Like Texas could use Walters even with his struggles this year. Do you then throw in Sandlin so they get someone who would be an up? This is a team that's using Jose Arenia right now in their bullpen. Uh, and then is it another piece, you know, to replace him? Is this maybe where Gabby Arias goes as a third piece because then they have someone who can be that fill in that that does the Josh Smith role um, and gets a new start? I, you know, I don't know if that's enough, but for a Texas team, they don't, I don't think they're trading Sebastian Walcott for relief help. And I don't know, we could always look at Cleveland's pen and see if there's someone better than Sandlin uh, in terms of the team. But I, I mean, I'm not trading. I mean, it, maybe this is where it is. Maybe it hurts more, but it's like, I mean, I'm willing to consider henches in a deal like that because of Heron, Smith, Gaddis, Class A. I'm trying to avoid those guys. Yeah. Maybe this is henches. Put Cantillo of, in the bullpen. Yeah. You know, yeah, maybe it maybe. is henches, but I, and the nice thing is cause he's an on-base guy. I know we're running out of time uh, is the fact of the matter that, uh, you know, maybe he's that perfect guy to put in the two hole cause he runs while he gets on base and then you've solidified the top of your lineup and you put him a short and we get out of the black hole that is currently there. Yeah. They need to make some moves offensively. They need to make moves in general. This is a gen. This is, this is not a, it's a generational bullpen in 2024. It's not a generational bullpen throughout the generations. It's a generational bullpen in 2024. They have to make moves to get that bullpen to the playoffs and let it do its work. Tomorrow's show, we will get to Travis Bazzano. We will get to um, the draft money and the pool, all that stuff that happened. Mm -hmm. We'll get to our pre-deadline prospect rankings if the Guardians don't make a deal, and we will talk about other draft pick debuts. I promise we'll get to that yeah. tomorrow after we talk about the Detroit series as well, and if there's any trades made. Yep. Uh, make sure to join us always. Uh, Bazana, great debut for the Basmanian Devils. So, so fun. Make sure. So fun. And uh, we might have a bonus episode. So check in and go check out to see if that occurs. But thank you all and go, go, Guardians, go.